Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. And this is a feast we celebrate every year as the Sunday after Christmas, unless, of course, it just happens to fall that Christmas is on Sunday, and so the following Sunday is New Year's. But this is a feast where we look at Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in that unit as a holy family. And as I've mentioned before, Pope Francis has uh, announced this year, starting on the Immaculate Conception on December 8th, a few weeks ago, through the following December 8th, to be a year dedicated to St. Joseph, a year of Joseph. And it's a beautiful thing that when we look at this year of Joseph, we get to look at his relationship with the Holy Family. It's good because a lot of times we can look at our own weakness, our own brokenness, and we say, well, what do I have to offer? And we look and say, what did Joseph have to offer the Holy Family? Let's be honest. He was dealing with the Incarnate Word, and he was dealing with the Immaculate Conception. What did he have to offer? When something was done wrong, he knew, everyone knew who to blame. And so we look at St. Joseph and say, what did he have to offer? And I'd say, he had to offer a lot. He was the father of the family, and just because he wasn't perfect and they were, didn't mean he couldn't contribute well to the family. God chose him to protect the Holy Family, to love them, to guide them as he guided them to Bethlehem and then to Egypt and then back into Israel up to Nazareth, to provide for them being the carpenter. And even though he was a poor man, because we know that because in the scriptures, as we heard today, they offer uh, to the Lord uh, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. That was the offering of the poor. If they were older, or if they had more money, they would then offer a different type of animal that was more expensive. This was the offering of a poor man. And yet, he provided for the Holy Family. And key to what he did was he was obedient to God. And he was obedient immediately. So many times in the Gospel of Matthew, that's kind of the Gospel of, of Joseph. If you want to find anything about Joseph, that's really the place where Joseph shows up. He shows up a little bit in Luke, but he's, it's, Mary is the focus in Luke when it's the Holy Family. Joseph shows up more in Matthew. And in that we hear, you know, that the angel appears to him in a dream with the Annunciation and says, you know, uh, you are to take Mary into your home. And then it said, when he awoke, he did as the angel commanded. He acted. He was obedient to the will of God. Then at another time after the child was born and after the Magi had come, he had this dream of the angel saying, rise, take this child and his mother and flee to Egypt. And so he rose. And took the child and his mother by night. They went immediately. He acted on what God wanted him to do. And then he's in Egypt. And at that time after Herod finally dies, he gets the call from God to go back to Israel. It says he goes, and so he rose. He's action, always doing what God asks of him. He is obedient immediately. Sometimes I'm obedient, but I delay obedience. Sometimes God asks me to do something, and say, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. More often than not, though, <laughs> I don't get to it. But the Lord shows us through St. Joseph immediate obedience. God calls, he acts. And this is a great, great grace for us because then we know that we can go to Joseph and he is so favored by Almighty God that he answers prayers so readily. God has gifted him with grace to be able to then be an intercessor for us on earth, an intercessor for all our problems. I think about uh, back when I was in college, I was part of the choir at UNH, the concert choir, and we did a, uh, a, a tour of Montreal, 
And as we were up there, we went to two Anglican churches because our director was Anglican, but then we went to two Catholic churches. We went to St. Joseph Oratory and we went to Notre Dame. Uh, I'm sorry, Notre Dame. I'm not French, am I? Yes, I am, and yet I can't speak it. But uh, so we went, we went to St. Joseph Oratory. And I don't know if you've been to St. Joseph Oratory, but it's a, it, it's a huge structure, the, the largest church to Saint Joseph, dedicated to St. Joseph in the world. And it was uh, built by Brother Andre Bessette, now uh, St. Andre Bessette. And uh, he had this great devotion to St. Joseph. And I know priests who've gone there every year of their priesthood, going up and giving honor to God through St. Joseph. This was my first time when I was in college. Actually, it's the only time I've never been back, but it was a great experience. There's a room at the uh, entrance of the oratory that when you go in, it's full of canes and wheelchairs and, um, and crutches and other such implements. Why? Because people went in there needing them. And they walked out not needing them. Through the intercession of St. Joseph, miracles happened over and over and over again. It's a place of great devotion to St. Joseph, a place of great faith, and a place where miracles happen. As we we're dedicating this year to St. Joseph, just... Um, Last week, I was meeting with a couple of people to talk with them about what was going on in their lives. And both of them, on the same day, you know, two different, two different meetings, both of them told me about miracles that God had worked in their lives just within the past week through the intercession of St. Joseph. One of them was a physical healing that happened uh, to him, and the other was an emotional and spiritual healing. I think, I think God is pouring out a superabundance of grace this year through the intercession of St. Joseph. He's inviting us to go to Joseph, he who took care of the child Jesus, taught him the trade, taught him with Mary how to walk. We look to St. Joseph, and I think he will help us to walk also in faith, that if we go to St. Joseph with trust and with confidence in this year dedicated to him, that he will answer us. And so I invite you, go to Joseph, who is a loving father. He loves us so tenderly, so intimately. He who was the foster father, the adoptive father of Jesus, is adopting us as the brothers and sisters of Christ into his family. And so, take the time. Get to know Joseph this year. He was the head of the Holy Family, and yet he wasn't perfect. And he'll help us in our role, wherever we are in our vocation. He'll help us to grow closer to Christ. He'll help us to do the duties that we need to do. He'll help us to love, even in the midst of the trials that we have. And so we ask St. Joseph to be with us today and every day, drawing us close to the heart of Jesus.